defined by Oxford languages is the policy of extending a country's power and influence through colonization, use of military force, or other means. As defined by Merriam-Webster, it's the effect a powerful country or group of countries has in influencing or changing the way people live in other poor countries. So my question is, when did we decide our online businesses and work culture were going to uphold US and Western imperialism? In the 1980s, after the Vietnam War, two teenage refugees got on two very different types of boats and left the country of Vietnam. They wanted to forge a new path. Their journey led them to a country that promised opportunities and wealth. One of them, at 16 years old, left in the middle of the night on a fishing boat with five of his brothers and sisters. The other, at 14 years old, snuck onto a Chinese shipping boat with her brother and grandma. Opportunities, building wealth, a better future for themselves and their kids. My parents did all of this through a business that they owned for 20 plus years. It's the typical immigrant story, right? My immigrant story started a little differently. Strong US passport, English as my first and native language, the privilege and opportunity to have a European gap year, and another year after graduating from college that I did not have debt for. Thanks to my parents' immigration to the United States, I got a first class ticket to American privilege. Their journey afforded me with a strong and comfortable base to succeed in the United States. So what am I doing? as an immigrant, woman of color, and business owner living in a foreign country and foreign language. Okay, let's back it up and let me reintroduce myself. My name is Cassandra Lay, and I am a first-generation Vietnamese-American daughter of immigrants and refugees, who is also an immigrant and a business owner in a foreign country and foreign language. They say the apple does not fall far from the tree. And the funny thing is, I didn't realize how Asian or foreign I actually was to me and to others until arriving to my now home country, Spain. Surprising, right? I knew it was Asian, but I didn't realize what my identity meant to me and to others as a first generation Vietnamese American. I moved permanently to Spain at the end of 2017 after falling in love abroad. And instead of pursuing a traditional job, I decided to start my own career. I started my online business, a brand strategy and copywriting studio for black indigenous people of color, the LGBTQIA community, and feminist run brands and businesses. My partner and I moved to Madrid and I began networking hard to build up my brand and name reputation. I went to any and all networking events in English and Spanish and that's where I had culture shock. Y'all see me, I am Asian, but Others didn't necessarily see the same thing. People in the room stared and I could see them thinking, but never saying, what is she doing here? My existence in the room wasn't important and I clearly did not belong. Not until I spoke up and shared, hola, soy Cassandra. Soy de Estados Unidos y trabajo como estratega de marketing y copywriter. Which in English means, hi. I'm Cassandra and I'm from the United States. I work as a marketing strategist and copywriter. Y'all, the demeanor in the room changed. People, they were interested. They wanted to know more about me, what I was doing in Spain, more about my business, and US marketing strategies from the United States because that's what was seen as successful. So at every networking event I went to, I started with, I'm from the United States of America. <laughs> I would never lead with my other identity because that wasn't as impressive. What did this networking trick teach me about my identity and culture? That I was only important because I was from the United States. What it did internally was brew even more internalized oppression and racism. I didn't know it, but I couldn't accept all of myself. I could only accept the side of me that was seen as marketable, seen as successful, and seen as imperial. Now working in the online business space for almost four years, building an international and global clientele in English and Spanish, I see how imperialism tied with capitalism influenced me and my clients. 
Some of my clients came to me because they wanted US marketing strategies, because they thought it would bring them more business, more clients, more prestige, and yes, more money. And I thought if I copied and pasted US marketing strategies to my international clients, they could stand out more, market, and sell themselves like I had at those networking events. But here's what I got wrong. Cultures and identities play a large role in business and marketing. United States business, marketing, and work culture cannot be copied and pasted into other cultures, economic systems, or audiences. Also, who decided that this was the best way to work? <laughs> Our identities are intersectional. Just like I am Vietnamese American, my clients are also multicultural. They come from different countries, experiences, and speak different languages. This affects how they do business and marketing, especially online business. And the internet is global and fast. People can start an online business today and make money tomorrow, depending on their business and marketing offer. But we can work with anyone from anywhere, no matter where they're based, especially if we offer digital services and products. This contributes to the global economy. The internet made business more accessible but it also made US and Western imperialism, extreme capitalism, the patriarchy, white supremacy, and all the other nasty isms that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis more present. So if the internet is global and international, and you can work with anyone from anywhere, how do you know if your business and work culture are going to create the positive impact you want it to, especially if your clients are not from the United States? Or have you unconsciously accepted that your online business and work culture were going to uphold US and Western imperialism, capitalism, and white supremacy? I believe online small business owners have the power to be culture makers, shifters, and revolutionaries, especially if we apply a cultural competence and liberatory lens to our business and marketing strategy. Instead of creating a larger wealth, information, and opportunity gap because of imperialism and capitalism, we could be creating a more just and equitable world through our work. It will require a little imagination, understanding our cultures, learning to be more accepting and aware of other cultures, and looking at business and marketing as community-driving opportunities. Imperialism changes and influences the way people live, really imposing something on them. But what if that change looked more just? What if that change looked more equitable? What if we included a cultural competence and awareness lens to it? What if that change was liberatory? Will you join me in the revolution of business and marketing to create a world where, where we celebrate cultures, identities and communities instead of hyper-capitalism and imperialism? Thank you.